Hi friends, Andy Waxwood and Leather Doctor, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Um, we have another, yet another kitchen chair with some big problems. So fortunately the legs uh, and the base are really quite tight and I don't have to do anything to them. So that makes me very, very happy. Um, makes the customer happy too. Um, the main problem is, is that two things. One, um, the slap back, all these uh, pieces here are coming out, which means that the the glue is probably dried out and the pin, you see that little staple that they put there? Um, that doesn't work and really never works. And I, from, from what I understand is that oftentimes they don't clamp these um, when they make them. They put them together and then they drive a nail or a staple to hold it together while it's dry. Um, okay, so not what I would choose to do. But then again, I'm not the CEO of a multi-million dollar company that pumps out 50 billion shares a day. So, um, same problem down here. Uh, all the dried glue has to be scraped out and these popped back in and that's easy. Here's the harder part and this is kind of the interesting part. So this side of the chair has broken completely from the wood and what I think we're going to do is is that after we clean out everything and clean up everything, oh and you can see how this was made too, here's another mistake that I think uh, they made in their production. So this piece goes all the way through there and there's a wedge that goes there to tighten it and keep it tight and all right, that's not so bad either but then they put a screw see that they actually put them under the legs in the front too they put a screw in there um, I don't know either for maybe for stability to keep the wedge in um, but I would I would guess that the screw probably weakened uh, the wood enough and create a small crack that eventually over time this thing broke just my guess I could be wrong but we have to fix it anyway. So I guess next, uh, you know what? I'm not gonna show you the boring stuff. So basically, I'm gonna clean out all the glue out of those holes, but you've seen this a million times, nothing fancy about that. Uh, the fancy part will come here, when I think what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna take out that wedge, we're gonna glue this up, uh, maybe with epoxy. Yeah, I think we'll glue it up with epoxy, uh, this piece of it. Um, get it as strong as humanly possible, and then, um, take this awful screw out and uh, we're going to drill up from the bottom into this piece and put either a screw or a dowel, I haven't decided yet, um, but uh, and epoxy that in as well. So once we do that, we should have something uh, very, very strong, never to break again. So um, let's see what happens. While it's drying, I just want to show you how, uh, how the clamps work. So the, the back one, this bar clamp, um, just very simple. Because it's a rounded back, you can't get them on the sides um, without some maneuvering. Um, but that one really ought to do, give it enough tension just to keep the back on there nicely. Uh, I glued all of those uh, joints there and up there, um, so no big deal. Now this was the, this was something that took a little bit more creativity. So um, I wanted to put, I epoxied um, this with like an hour cure epoxy. So um, what I wanted to do was uh, put some tension on it and because you know this is a curved surface and you can't put a clamp up there um, taking one of these wood clamps and smoking it down really really tightly allowed me to use uh, another bar clamp to keep tension on it so I'm gonna leave this overnight and tomorrow um, I'll show you how uh, I'm going to uh, probably drive a dowel inside um, from underneath um, to give it even more stability. So I'll uh, see you in 24 hours. Okay, so at first I thought I would just take out this wedge, uh, drill straight down through here, um, epoxy and a dowel, and everything turns out right. However, um, <laughs> I can't get my drill because there's not much clearance here. I couldn't get my drill and the right size bit down into here without, well, taking off all the legs, which I'm certainly not going to do because they're nice and tight. Um, so that would be crazy. So instead, I came up with another idea. Here it is. So um, if you remember anything from the last video, we talked about um, pocket jigs. This is the Craig pocket jig, which will allow me to drill uh, at a very narrow angle um, through where, um, where this post was completely broken off from the post that's inside here still, sorry, inside here still. Um, so what I'd like to do then is 
just screw, um, excuse me, drill through the crack and into this nice big thick piece of oak. Um, drill it out and then I'm going to use um, a larger bit to accommodate a half inch piece of dowel and um, epoxy it in. It's going to go across the crack, give it a lot more strength and um, then shave off um, each side and hopefully everything goes well. So we're going to start with getting this through. I wish this were, this were a little tighter, but it's the best I could do because this surface is kind of rounded, so the, the clamp wasn't all that happy. that. Take off the clamp, take off the jig, uh, and I just put the, the tape on there um, just because I, it was hard to do with, uh, it was hard to hold that jig in place while putting the clamp on. So, painter's tape, nothing fancy. We're not fancy here at Wooden Leather Doctor of Mount Laurel, New Jersey, um, but we are pretty darn good. So, here we go, and I'll give you a better view of what's going on. So, here we are. So, come around here. You can see there's that pocket hole, um, which is actually made to accommodate a screw um, to go up through here. Uh, could put a screw, but I think I'd feel better about it if I were to drill this out some more, and I'm gonna actually screw um, a dowel through here with a lot of um, epoxy to really, um, really make it strong. Because you want to put, uh, when you have a cracked piece of wood, like, you know, flat like that, you want to go as close to a, 40, uh, a 90 degree angle as you can through it. So, uh, let's just, let's see what happens. All right, so uh, I took my half inch dowel and uh, went over to the um, uh, bench sander and just made it a little bit smaller. It's not perfect, but it's hard to do freehand. So uh, I'm gonna put this directly into the chuck of my drill. And um, I'm gonna load it up with some glue. I'm gonna try and twist it right in. But first you have to take the lid off the glue. It helps a lot. All right. Um, epoxy really isn't necessary at this point because uh, we already used epoxy on uh, the joint itself and this is probably even unnecessary um, but because it's a chair um, I really would like it just of course to be as strong as it possibly can be so um, putting this this piece to um, kind of pull the whole thing together a little bit more and that's loaded up the glue too um, I, I just think it's a good idea, so I'm going to try it. All right. Here we go. Let's see. All right, well, it filled in that spot up here, so and it's in there. It's really in there. Yep. All right. All right. So the dowel is in there really well. It's yep. It's all the way through. It's probably about halfway through the seat, and, and that's going to be plenty good. So now, flush cut saw. Fortunately, the dowel is going to cover up most of the pocket hole that we need. And I probably should have clamped down this seat onto the bench so that it doesn't have the tendency to move on me, but I was so worried about making this video that I forgot. Right? There we go. And that's what came out. 
So yeah, so that filled up most of it. So a little putty uh, will be fine. A um, little stain, a little polish. Uh, let's take a look at the front. Okay, so let's see if you can see that or not. You cannot, you can now. So right here. This is where the dowel um, went through and it's going into the seat now. So I, I really think that this is gonna give it a lot more stability. And other than some touch up and some polish, that's, this is gonna be good. So uh, let's take a look at the touch up. All right, once again, Mohawk putty comes to the rescue. Couldn't live without this stuff. So two pieces you mix together is furniture grade Bondo. It sands like wood, it stains like wood, and uh, it's really pliable and really super easy to work with. Uh, huge fan, and Mohawk Finishing Products, if you're out there, how about some free stuff? Just a little, throw me a bone, huh? Wet my beak a little. Nothing? Well, fine. Continue to buy your stuff anyway. So. with a good sharp chisel. Just scrape it away at the overfill. And to get it a little prettier, we're going to finish it off with some beeswax polish. And it'll help to clean it a bit too. And with 4O steel wool, of course. marker that was left on here, but the steel wool with the polish pick it right off. this dry for a bit and then go after it with a clean dry cloth. And 
there you have it. And folks, remember, for certain types of leukemia, a cure is possible with the help of a stem cell transplant. To get a cheek swabbing kit, please go to either bethematch.org or giftoflife.org. Thanks so much, and see you next time.